Hello, and welcome to Kolak, America's heart. Life is generally easy in Kolak. The spirit of our small town is built around enjoying life, despite our technological empire. Kolak is like Paris. Art, music, and treasures of life are not just incidental. They are central to the spirit of our little town. This is a special gift for visitors and those who live in our vast green valley. Kolak's natural beauty can be thanked to the peaks that tower over us in our four corners, shielding us from the elements. Spend the day at Crater Lake, fed by the ever-flowing Riley River. America's heart. Enjoy our historic Main Street, or take a tour of our world-famous Shepherd's Winery, my favorite. Kolak prides itself in being a world leader in renewable energy and advanced medicine, all thanks to our most famous attraction, Synchroneity Tech. Many new families find their home in Kolak. Brought in to fill one of the country's most exciting genetic research facilities, many open roles. <laughs> Science is at the very soul of Kolak, unlike anywhere else in the world. Gated by nature itself. We begin again, 8 a.m., Thursday, March 7th, 1991. Jaina Grace stands, peering through her wooden slap blinds, sipping tea from her four-fingered left hand as the fog rises from the dewy tall grass in her front lawn. She wonders why she hasn't cleaned up the trash that that man spilled days ago. She must have skipped her weekly shift at the comic shop. It's Thursday. She hasn't left her house in over a week. She'll pick it up next Tuesday, before her shift, she thinks. A brush against her legs slowly pulls her back from her gaze. They are hungry, she thinks. As she turns from the window, we reveal, as a surprise to us, but not a surprise to her, of course. 87 cats sitting perfectly still, upright, watching the fog with her. They turn, synchronized with her movements, stepping as she steps towards the kitchen for their morning meal. How long have the walls been stained, she thinks as she passes the memories lining her long highway, uh, hallway. She smiles as she turns the corner, expecting to see a white tile floor. At what point were there enough, she thinks, her brain recalling an image of migrating blackbirds blocking out the sun. Jaina, please share with us, if you will, your 87 feline morning routine. Well, um... When Mr. Mistopheles tells me he's hungry, I first I I, I I run inside my heart because I don't want him to be ever, ever, ever hungry. And then I walk over to one of my four fridges because I take discount meat and I grind it myself because it makes their coats glossier. And then I open the door and I open the Tupperware and I get out the ground chicken and I place it in every single bowl. It takes about an hour and a half for everyone to feed. And then I pick up the bowls and I put them in one of the four dishwashers that I have. Because if I hand wash them all, I get carpal tunnel. The sound of metal scraping against a concrete floor, muffled but still sharp startles Jaina. The strays are restless again. Twelve cages lining her unfinished basement containing the wild ones. Though they frustrate her with their obnoxious crying, do they not deserve her love? She grabs the milk jugs and heads downstairs, 
always annoyed at the extra time it takes to remove the two padlocks from the hallway side of the door. She wonders why she doesn't just keep them off, why she put them there in the first place. She misses him. And then she remembers, but tries to forget, they were put there for him. The shrieking cries of caged animals begins upon the placement of her foot creaking on the first wood step. Morning light pierces in from a ground level window like a chiaroscuro painting, bouncing off the thin metal rods of the cages. The more the strays struggle, the more the light dances. The basement is warm, damp, a stickiness to the air that seeps into your outer layers. But something is different about this morning, the newest stray. Jaina feels drawn to it. It's only as she gets closer that she realizes that it's actually, in a way, whispering to her through the air itself. Miss Grace, Jaina Grace, please follow the sound of my voice. As Jaina leans down to fill the stray's bowl, its eyes catch hers. Miss Grace finds herself trying to resist its gaze the best she can, but it's quite difficult. She's drawn even closer her face now pressed up against the metal squares of the cage, her fingers locked in like links of a chain. As the stray speaks, a calmness washes over her. Jaina, do not be alarmed. I want to thank you, Jaina, for taking me in. I see that you care for all creatures. I know that you care for the hurt ones even more. Do you care for me, Jaina? Yeah, yes, Debbie Gibson, I care for you. I care very much for you. You came here for love and help and here, here you are. I. I would help you with anything, Debbie Gibson. I grow tired, Jaina. I'm using all of the energy that I can to speak to you now. Follow the sound of my voice. Do not be alarmed. I need your help. It is not safe here, Jaina. I know you cannot free me, that it would not be allowed. They will make sure of it. Can you help me, Jaina? Yes, Debbie Gibson. Can I call you Debbie? Y yes, in this predicament, I feel you can call me whatever it is you like. Bubbles. That's yes. fine, but will you help me? Yes, Bubbles. I will help you. You must find a boy. His name is Billy Baker. He is the only one that I can trust. Jaina, tell him how many cats you have. But... Okay, Bubbles. They are fighting me, Jaina. They will surely silence me like the others. No. Tell him Bucket sent you. Buck... Bu Bucket? <laughs> but wait, your name's Bubbles. Debbie Gibson, no, wait! Do you want milk, Debbie? The stray's oh. eyes close as it sinks to the ground of its cage. Jaina thinks for a moment she may recognize that name. Dear passenger, please roll a brains difficulty of 10. Nine, but- Jaina then... has 11 tokens available. I think I'll use Three tokens. You know a lot, it seems. Billy Baker, you remember, was the town coma boy. Coma boy, that's it. I knew I knew that name. The talk of the town upon him waking up last year. You've seen him loitering around the comic shop that you work on on Tuesday nights. But it is 8.30 a.m. It's safe for you to assume he is currently in school. 
you feel a great desire to reach out to him. Como boy, he stole a swamp thing one time. I remember that little shit. Well, if Bucket slash Bubbles, no, Bubbles, Debbie Gibson. I thought Debbie Gibson was a name that was perfect for this cat, but Bubbles might be better. If Bubbles needs me to do this, I will find Coma Boy, Billy, something. I guess I'll go and be a creepy woman on the, and go to uh, go to the school. I guess is that legal? Is it legal to go to a school without a child? Maybe I could take a cat and try to enroll the cat. In I'll take... Roll your brains. Difficulty of 12. 14. You remember that animals are not allowed on school grounds in the city of Kolok. Oh, that's right. So I should not bring... Oh, Tiger, I'm so sorry. You can't have a field trip today. You can't have one. As she walks up the stairs with Tiger in hand, her brain foggy, a river of feline friends make their way down the steps. You leave the door I. You walk to the front door. You pull open the catch-all drawer to retrieve your keys for your pink Vespa. Your late husband sits petting one of your black cats in the Lazy Boy recliner. Where are you going, sweetie? Oh, uh... I'm just going out. It's, that's okay, isn't it? I you can know go it's outside. not time for you to leave. Uh... It's not permitted. Well... I just, um, I needed to get some more milk for the kit cats. I was going to make them a, a semi-fredo. It's not Tuesday. It's not Tuesday, but... You shouldn't be able to leave. I understand that, sweetie, but if I could just go and make a semi-fredo for the cats, I thought I would make liver semi-fredo, and it would be a treat because it's, it's Lace's birthday today, tomorrow. It's soon. It's next Monday. I know. You know this. I understand. Lace has lost a toe, and I thought maybe I could just give her a treat. And semi-fredo is such a nice thing. It, it, it's very warm in the mouth, but the texture of ice cream. I, I saw it on a food show. Jaina looks down to see that her keys are out of her hands and now resting back on the nightstand. Can you roll your grit difficulty of eight? I think it's a six. You have nine tokens available. But, uh, it was a six out of eight. I think it looks good. I think I'm going to stay with that. A six out of eight? Oh, no, that's not good enough. I think I'll <laughs> go ahead and add one. Two, if Two, math is perhaps. correct. Yes. I'm if you would like to succeed. Now, succeeding's up to you in this situation. I'd like to add two tokens. Understood. I'm frazzled. I really want that semi freedom. Jaina is able to regain some control of herself in this moment, <gasps> grab her keys, and bolt out the door. As she's exiting the house, you hear yelling from inside, If you make us mad, whatever happens next is on you. You did this. Remember that. You did this. I don't have a helmet. It's fine. Jaina jumps on her pink scooter and drives away. This isn't whimsical. This is not whimsical. 11.30 a.m. Kolok High. It appears yesterday's memorial and chili cook-off did the school some good. The events that happened two days ago, though traumatic for some, is just another example of resiliency of kids forever pushing forward through the darkness. Eyes still wide and quite hopeful. But before I go any further and make any assumptions on the current mental condition of our passengers, why don't we let them tell us how they're feeling in their own words through their journal entries. Dear journal, I've been slept in over too many hours. I'm not really good at math. I didn't sleep at all last night. 
I had to figure out a way to get my Jeep out of the library, and I went back, and Mr. Cole seemed super bummed, so we just kind of sit and chatted for a bit, till we came to the conclusion that I should probably just take the doors off the library, and then that's how we can get my Jeep out. I helped him put him back up, so at least the library looks okay, but I went through all of the papers. I didn't find anything, nothing that we needed. I'm gonna die. I haven't even lived my life or left my mark and I'm running out of time. I did find some weird stuff, like cats have gone missing, like crazy amounts of cats. There's been like over 85 reports in the, the papers that I found. I also found out that there's some dude named Gerald Grace who like threw himself into a wood chipper, really freaking weird. Um, I found out that uh, there was a fender bender, a winery suffered a infestation, killing 80% of the crops. This is all bull crap. But I'm telling you, just in case it's important, and I'm also like losing brain cells as I'm doing this because I haven't slept. I just, I just don't want to die. I don't know how much time I, I really have left. Billy's thoughts, March 7th, 1991. Well, I'm grounded. Here I was thinking saving our friend Sammy from the crazy librarian's depression brain was a noble cause. Even if it was the right thing to do though, how could I ever tell my parents? Regardless, showing up after midnight on a school night was a bad move. Eventually, I was able to convince my mom to list lighten the sentence after all the absolute bombs she dropped on me earlier. Am I really supposed to believe my pinky grew back while I was in a coma and the doctors used some experimental method to teach me shit while I was out? It really feels like my parents are trying to lie to me, but I'll go along with it. Everyone lies, you just gotta wonder why sometimes. The good news is I'm really starting to feel like a team with Mickey, Sky, and Marcus, and I guess Sammy. He still kind of sucks, but we need him. Everyone agrees that we work pretty well together. Could we all be friends if not for all the weird sci-fi horror bullshit going on? At the end of the day, I really feel like these freaks are good friends, and it makes me feel a way I've never really felt before. I mean, Tibby's a great friend, but with Tibby, it always felt like the two of us were against everybody. So I guess I'm saying, even with all the weird sci-fi horror bullshit, and the parents lying, and the missing memories, I'm feeling oddly comfortable. It's funny that just yesterday it felt like us against the world, but that maybe there was hope. But after seemingly saving Mr. Cole, it didn't feel like we saved him at all. What if that's me? Trying every day just to succeed, to beat expectations, but falling short every time. What if I'm not good enough? What if I never make it out of this town, just like Mr. Cole? Why bother trying if you're just gonna fail anyway, right? I never told anybody, but I want to go to college. I wanted to believe my stories might take me there, but what is it about this town that makes you feel trapped and hopeless? I wrote a poem once when I was little and on the road with my dad. It was about how I wished I was a tree, but my roots were too weak and my soil was too dry. I went weeks without water and I was losing all my leaves. I was losing hope. I don't remember how it ended. If there's one thing that I do with my life, I want it to be that I saved this town. That I saved Rachel. So that even if I never make it out, maybe they can. Even if it's the only thing I do. Dear Tandy Computer, Bad news. Went back to the library. Got sucked into a void. <laughs> Sky was like 50 feet tall kind of messed up there's some mines I'm not supposed to go to there's this guy that's putting Cheetos on the ground that a squirrel wants me to take out and there's no cats good news I had a really good chicken sandwich it's pretty delicious and sounds kind of weird but hang around with these people that I usually don't hang around with I feel myself getting oddly closer to them. Like, I've always been friends with everyone, but it's like on that very superficial level, like I'm kind of like their sidekick that says wacky things and then you don't really hear a backstory about me, but it's not a real deep connection. It's a weird trope. 
I'm sure that will end at some point, though. But with these guys, I feel like we're actually getting something, you know, personal, unique. One of them even stayed in my house now. It's finally nice to have some normalcy, even though I had to go through a lot of weird shit to get to it. The bell for lunch period rings. Last night, pre-decided by our group, as long as well as Sammy, that they would be meeting up today in the cafeteria and eating together. On the way, though, you all hear over the speakers of the, ca of the school. Can Billy Baker come to the office, please? Billy Baker to the office. There's someone here to see you. Tibby standing next to Billy Baker after just getting out of class. Dude, what's going on? How would I know, dude? What what happened last night? What do you mean what happened last night? I called your house and told you everything that was going on. Oh, right. It was late. I slept through half of that conversation. Well, I mean, another crazy thing happened. We went to the library and we like went inside the librarian's brain, but I don't have time to tell you that now. Okay. Did you find Rachel? No. You forgot. Yes. Okay, I'll remember for you. Yeah, uh, but the problem is that you don't remember Rachel either. No. We found Sammy. Sammy remembers but Rachel. But I remember you telling me you remember about Rachel. And I but now you know now that because about... you told me, so this right, is but all you pointless. Forgot. No, it's not pointless. I have value. It's true. You're great at research. Um, did you look up anything I asked you to? Nothing. I forgot that part of the conversation. <sighs> God damn it. Look, I'll go to the office with you just in case... Uh, cool. Yeah. We um, like where you're beat my somebody up. like, you're my escort. I'll be your muscle. Cool. Uh, no. Why don't you just be like my escort because I'm having like a rough emotional day. I don't know. That sounds kind of weird. Just be like, get this like. Is why we, say, no, here, watch. This watch is, what I do. This watch is what how I do. we get picked on. Watch what I do. Here's all you have to do. Yeah, Billy's not feeling too good. Okay. The whole right. coma thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, let's go. It's as easy as that. It always works. Okay. Okay. While the rest of our passengers make their way to the cafeteria, Billy Baker and Tibby head up towards the front where the reception's office is. And on the way, you notice from a distance a woman standing around five foot four, long hair. She seems even at a distance to appear to be covered in different sorts of animal hair covering her dark clothing from head to toe. She sees you, and you recognize this woman as does Tibby. Dude, is that... She works Tuesday nights at the comic Yeah, 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 yeah. Why? Did she call for you? Shit, dude. Remember when I stole Swamp Thing? <laughs> She's been giving me eyes ever since. Are you told me... To... Is this a test? You told me to forget that you stole Swamp Thing. Well, because it wasn't good. Okay. Alan, more to be desired, if you know what I mean. Well, I mean, I th I, it's pretty good. Yeah, I'm not going to go on the record saying it's not good. It I was okay. I'm just trying to justify <laughs> the fact that I stole something. Okay. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> Hello, miss. I am not Billy important. Baker's. Not, he, not is, he was in a coma, and he's had a rough day. I don't want to talk to you, you small youth. Billy, I don't... She smells weird. I am standing <clears throat> right here, and I heard you say that. Uh, it... She smells like... Chloride and... Sulfate. It's urine. Those are clear... Phosphate and it's, sodium and... It's urine. Ammonia and... Okay, I'm not an AP uric. chemistry test teacher. You can just be quiet right now. Did you... Hi. Um... Hi, Billy. Did you... Yeah, hi. I need to take you aside. What? Billy was in a coma. <laughs> I'm his escort. I you understand. Can talk. His name is Coma Boy. I really, really don't need you in this conversation. <coughs> he's my friend Tibby. Well, unless he's your like certified bodyguard, I think he could step aside, okay? Uh, uh, he he is my certified <coughs> bodyguard. Certified bodyguard. Tibby stands about four inches shorter than Billy Baker and about 50 pounds heavier. He is a friendly boy. You're too friendly. Step back, sir. <laughs> what is that? You're in my space. You're sniffing me. It's aggressive. I'm not sniffing you. It's you're emitting. It's why is flowing this, out. I don't know why this is about you. It's, we need to stop no, this being about you because it's not, it's a, not about you. It's about you stinking. You're okay, a smelly okay. woman. That's, that's kind of rude. Listen, I need to talk to you and I have a 
I have a word. I Billy need someone needs you. Baker will roll his grit. Difficulty of six. Eight. Billy Baker is unaffected by the smell momentarily. <clears throat> See, he's fine. Well, you... it's just because I wet my pants the other day, and I do that sometimes when I get... If we need to get you a diaper, the nurse is... You know what? I don't like this. It's really not... It's not right, and it's rude. I, I take care of a lot of animals, and some of them are sick and oh. incontinent. And the fact that you are bringing this no, up makes I'm, me want to leave, but I can't leave I'm because sorry. I have to be here for you, Bucket. Did you say? Did hey, you just call me Bucket, or are you yep. talking about the the person that wants to see me? Hey, as Bill, Bucket, Billy, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna I'm gonna go tell the others. I'll be back. Okay, wait. Short little boy, please leave faster. I I I am leaving. What is this? Smelly lady. Why are you? Okay. Why are you? Right. Nothing. That? Don't tell him that I have that test. Check. Oh, you're all, all with Out. all oh, with the know. latest tech, are you? You're just gonna rub your tech in my face? Well, I have, I have a beta cassette recorder, and I. Really like Full House, so she's, I... She smells really bad. Check. Out. Good check. Out. Say over. 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 Out. Are you done? Yeah. <laughs> it really is apparent why you were in a coma. <clears throat> what? Or Did that the fact that you were in a coma. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm really dumb. Um, I mean, I didn't need saying, to say that. No, I get it. You usually... Do you, you smell like pee and I'm dumb. <laughs> do, you, do you do the self-harm talk a lot? Because I've read a couple of books about... Strengthening character, and I feel like you might no, need it's, one. No, it's like a defense technique. Is that like if you make fun of yourself before others can, then they feel deflated. I understand that. I would lend you the book, but it smells like pee, and you probably wouldn't like that. <laughs> I probably wouldn't. To be honest with you, pee is a marker. It's it's like a kind of an animal, animalistic way to mark your territory. I know, and after, after you told me that it was animals, yeah. it like it smells less bad, just knowing. It's sort of like oh, a thing so in like your head. Oh, it's like a context. Just, mm -hmm. One time somebody gave me like a spoonful of something, and I was like, oh, it, it's it's kind of sweet. And then they were like, it's dirt. And then knowing that it was it's dirt, just I like was that. like, they're feeding me dirt. It's just like that. But you don't know. You don't know what kind of thing is in your mouth are, sometimes. Are you, Can, are you working for Bucket? A uh, moment. One moment. Uh, we need to follow up on that. Can you please roll your <laughs> grit difficulty of six, we'll say. Me? Yes, please. Difficulty mm, of six. Oh, my grit is... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. That was not very good. Uh, Jaina does have seven tokens available. It's up to her whether or not she wants to use them in this situation. It seems like uh, I would need to be at least... You don't have to use the tokens. It's I, your choice. You know what? I'm going to... I I don't know. I'm feeling very self-conscious right now. I'm out in public, and there are people s definitely giving me a wide perimeter, and I'm self-conscious because I really wish I had just clean, changed into one clean sweater, but this is my only sweater. So I'm going to say that that means not going to use the tokens. Not going to use the tokens. Okay, understood. As you mentioned, the spoonful of dirt, it does bring back a quite horrid memory, though you are sharing it in a way that is quite nomenclature very very casual uh, the memory is that of your husband tying you down to a chair and feeding you this dirt and telling you that it tastes sweet he told me it tasted sweet who bucket no 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 gerald gerald uh, gerald I, he wouldn't want me talking about him he wouldn't want me talking about me he can't i can't talk about that. i'm so sorry to say anything sorry gerald i'm so sorry i guess when I you say be here. gerald Who's Gerald? Wait, hold on. Are you working for Bucket? What do you know about Bucket? His first name's Perry, which is hilarious. Perry Bucket? Perry Bucket. Why is that hilarious? I don't have the Perry. context to know what is funny What's about that. What's your first name? My name is Jaina. Well, I mean, yeah, that's a nice name. Thank Perry. You. Perry. What's wrong with Perry. Perry? Perry Mason is one of the best detectives in all fiction. The case of the missing cat? I don't the know, kitten, it just sounds like a the dorky shy little name. kitten. Also, the, like, so bucket. Arbitrary. Yeah, I know. It's just. And, and he can't help having a last name like that. I cling to what I can because he frightens me. This is why you're going to have problems in college if you ever get there. Listen. We're going to cut momentarily to check in on the rest of our group who's <laughs> currently in the cafeteria enjoying their school lunch. What's on the menu today, Marcus Bennett? Uh, it's a square pizza. With one pepperoni, but like it's every one is different in size and location. Understood. As you all sit at the table where you've 
collected, this ragtag group. Sammy joins you as well, now feeling like a part of the gang. Where's uh, Billy? You guys heard him call the office, right? We don't know what's going on. Okay. Um, so... Spill it, Sky. Spill what? What'd you find out? We left you with all the papers. Oh, yeah. Hang on. I want to pull a giant box of Gushers out of my backpack and set it down. And then also a huge Ziploc bag full of sugar and set it down. Like, uh, do you not keep books in there? <laughs> uh, do you have all the papers in that box of Mickey. candy? I haven't slept in over 24 hours. Just tone it down. Oh, sugar's going to make you crash. That's a bad No, idea. it's going to be good. It's either this or drugs. <laughs> drugs are probably better for you. I'll do both. Don't test me. Don't tempt her. Don't tempt me. Yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, so. Okay, so you were up <clears throat> all night figuring it out? Yeah. Mm. I found out some stuff, guys. Found out some crazy stuff. Cats have been going missing since... Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Do we lose her? Do we lose her? Wait, Give her some more candy. What, what is in that? What are you drinking? You who? Give it to me. But it's my you. Give it to me, Marcus. Do you want to die? Just give it to her. So I give her my you who and, and I just... I reach in my bag, and I pull out another <laughs> you who I grab his you who and I spray it into my face. That's a... Uh, hold on. That's a... Get, hold on. Don't... I'll... We'll oh. get there. There's Can you roll little... your brains for a difficulty of 10? <laughs> to say. There's a little hole. I was going to just squirt, like... <laughs> you who's are in a glass bottle. Oh... <gasps> 1991. Okay, I was, you know, oopsie. It's better for the environment. Yeah, guys, aren't we supposed to be high tech? Which one's the D tent? This no. Ooh, oh. it explodes. I'm a genius. I roll it again because it exploded, right? That's yes, yes. Oops. That's fine. It succeeds. It's, it's great. That's right. <laughs> you go to squeeze, uh, surprised by the rigidity of this bottle, reminded <laughs> that it's a. Not a Capri Sun or a Sunny D, or it is a glass bottle, in fact, much like a Gatorade at the time, and you stop yourself, calm. No, it doesn't phase me. Never mind. And then I school like this. Ugh. Okay, wait, it's just what wait, I needed. Hold on. Can you, you pour it? In my face. It? Into my face. Do you drink it or do you pour it pour on Pour it yourself? on my face. I need something to wake me <laughs> <Done>. up. <laughs> Sky Hawkins is now sitting in the middle of the high school cafeteria covered <laughs> in chocolate milk. Did you just try and crush that glass bottle with your fists? No. Listen, cats have been going missing, okay? Yeah. Cats have been going missing. There's this person who, wait, hang on. There's been 85 reports of cats going missing. 60 reports of, of this happening all at the same point. People will like bring a cat in and it'll be a little baby kitty. Like, kitty. I said like I was British or something. Kitty. Focus, kitty. Sky, focus. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, um. The cats, th that's what I found out. It was a bunch of useless information. That's and it. I'm gonna die. There's, I am running out of time and I just ate a lot of sugar. But, okay, My but dentist Bucket, is gonna be so mad at me. Why would Bucket keep boxes in the back of his car Wasn't this about in, cats? Is it Was this in Mr. Uh, uh, Jules' uh, office? Were these boxes, papers from his thing? Did Bucket Gosh, ask you anything about think. cats? He meant, he just said something about where have all the cats gone and that's it. So he's here investigating suicides and cats. But why does Mr. Joel have these papers? Does he like cats too? I... If he's an FBI agent, it's quite possible he has case files on things other than just one person. But we got the wrong boxes. Obviously. Well, did I we don't think it was obvious because you just thought that it was actually the same I boxes. I am going to pull your underwear I'm, I'm so, okay, over your head right. and into your nostrils. And then I'm gonna go like this and jiggle your brain with my fingers. And I think then okay. maybe you could think. Sammy gets up and excuses himself from the table just as Tibby sits down. Whoa. Oh, hey, wow. It's hey, trading off here. Uh, Tibby, <laughs> Tibby. Tibby here, everybody. So, um, Tibby, where's Billy? How's it going, Tibby? Uh, Billy's talking to some really smelly woman in the front. Is that like a coma thing? Mm, no. Did he pee his <laughs> pants again? Did he pee on the woman? I don't think. Where are they right now, Tibby? They're at the receptionist desk, and this woman, she, as I was walking away, she said the word 
Fuck it. <gasps> just, she just... I want to get up said, immediately and run it, to him. Yeah, me too. Cut to <laughs> just a moment earlier as the conversation was finishing up here between Jaina and Billy Baker. I mean, it's, it's, I, I agree. You're, you're good enough and you're worth it. And you need to just embrace that you can love yourself even if you're flawed. Apparently we missed quite a bit of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I really needed to hear that. I feel like I get, you know, a lot of people, I feel very, like, I guess one-dimensional. It feels like people well, are just You're defined by that this, one thing you know, with like the coma. Exactly. I mean, I just immediately thought, oh, the coma boy. But that was really selling you short. You're a, you're a, you're a four-dimensional human being. Thank you. Are there any actions moving forward in this situation? Hold on. I need to bring Bucket to my house Do because... Do you work for the FBI? Wait, mm, what? You no, have to bring him? I need Bucket. Someone's life depends on it. Debbie Gibson. It's... I don't want to go into it. Debbie Gibson's life depends on Bucket coming to my house. Please. Please bring him. Who's... So Debbie's in trouble? Her. Okay. Um... Yeah. And she has a little on. bit of mange, but that's beside the point. Mange. So you just walked into the school and you said, I need to speak to Billy Baker? And there's they, no security. They yet. weren't like... No, they there's weren't like, no security. There is security at the school, but you are an adult. And this is 1991. Huh. I well, know. I mean... Can you, like, get me out of school right Absolutely. now? Absolutely. I'll just sign. I think I just signed things. All right. Uh, hey, 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 Tibby? Uh, ch check. Hey, I think I'm going to go with this lady. Wait, the others are coming for you. Okay, should I wait? Over. Why is Sorry, this... I forgot to say over. Yeah, don't um, forget. Not over, over. yet. No, no, stop. I don't... <laughs> okay, do I say... Do I have to wait? I'm... Hold on, my finger was still on the button. You probably said something. Okay, I don't anyway. I like this relationship with this other kid with you. I don't. I don't think he brings out the best in you. He's he's fine. He's he's cool. He's very controlling. Um, I don't know, Billy. You're your own person. Can I go with you? Over. Absolutely not. He, he yeah, cannot. you can come. No. Okay, no. I'm on my way. I'm That's gonna. Cool, I swear. I'm gonna. Why? I'll uh, meet you out front. I'm gonna climb through the window. It's faster. I need him. See, because I go through a lot of things, and he. He helps me big what time. What asset is he bringing? Because I don't think he has any assets, this I, kid. I just trust him. And honestly, I mean, I don't know how old you are. Probably like 40, 50. Okay, I'm not anywhere near that. So thank you. Well, regardless, I, Bucket told me not to trust strangers. And if there's one takeaway that I got from Bucket, I need help. Can I, I don't want to die right, right now. Grace... Roll her brains, difficulty of eight. Fifteen. Jaina Grace remembers that the exact words that were spoken to her by Debbie Gibson were that you must find Billy Baker, that he is the only one I can trust. Tell him how many cats you have. Oh. Tell him Bucket sent you. I need to revise a lot of the things that we were talking about. Because I was okay. so off-put by this Tibbetts lad. <laughs> Are you actually, like, 50? Listen, I... The rest of the group arrives. Okay. Stop right there, villain! What are you doing? What's going on here? Who is this? Uh, she's... She's cool. Um, I need this boy. What? Okay, yeah, it's... Okay, maybe it's not... Maybe she's not cool. It's weird when you say it like boy. that. Okay. I, uh... I have 85 cats, and I just need to tell Wait a you this... That, um, you're the only person that I can trust. How did you know I want to touch a cat? You just said it I don't think I've ever us. seen one. We just, we all, you're, you're the one who's been stealing the cat? No, there's no stealing. They're, they have a, a, they have their own minds. They have their own minds. Do child. you realize there are no cats in this town, but yet you have all these cats? You have like all the, the that, cats. That's... There's been like over 80 reports of missing cats. 85 specifically. Yeah. I, was, I was sent by Bucket to take this young boy to my house, and I just Bucket. need it to happen right now, okay? That is, and that, please don't let that kid Tibbets come, because I have a real antipathy toward that small ch You small hear, hey, team. hey, Tibby. You look on the other side of the room, and you see Tibby is standing outside where he was supposed to be waiting for you. He's covered in grass. Very clearly, he jumped through the school cafeteria window to meet you outside. <laughs> Everybody jump on my Vespa. We're going now. What? what? Oh, okay. Well, all of us? we can just all get in my Jeep and we could, I could follow oh, yeah. you. yeah. Excuse me, ma'am? Ma'am? The receptionist calls from behind the desk. Uh, what are you doing with these children? This is my mom. 
Yeah. No, it's not, Ms. It's Hawkins. It's my mom. You never met my this mom. This is our mom. We're it, all adopted. I would believe you if you had said, this is my mom, not this is my mom. You've never met my mom. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try the this is my mom. I will let these handle it. I am going to use my charm <laughs> to try to get uh, us uh, to be leaving. Why don't you say it first and then I'll let you roll. Okay, great. I would like uh I know there's this must be a misunderstanding. These children were signed up for a community hour and I'm taking them to do some volunteer work with some homeless children that are in the town. They volunteered to put together backpacks to send these kids on their way. Homeless and kids in Kolok? There are four of them. They're just passing through, and they were on a to, list to, to help where? these children. To where? This is a dead end. Passing through to where? Well, from one point, you can always get somewhere else in life. You think the it's homeless beautiful. kids have a great sense of direction? They're just like, I'm going to head to... Portland. Watch your tone, Cobble Sorry. Boy. Sorry. He was in a coma. Yeah. We, we all know he brings it up often. Well, I mean, did you really stop to think what it means to have your life pause like this? To be to be defined by one trauma in your life? Never to be able to outgrow it as wow. a person? Yeah. Jeez. He's a, he's a child inside, and he's broken, and here you are putting a label yeah. on him? This and is abhorrent. What kind of leadership is this in this youth? The receptionist wheels backwards. Oh. Are you trying to show me your wheelchair as a point of making me feel guilty? Because I don't. I, I would think that you would I sympathize. Think I, think I don't feel sorry for Coma Boy. See, it's, you shouldn't say that out loud to people. You know, that I, I don't feel sorry for you. I have a book I can lend you about healing it's yourself from within. Tongue. Jaina Grace will roll her charm. Difficulty of 14. Okay. I have a... Mm, mm. Okay. Oh, okay. I have a 9 here. Jaina Grace has 10 tokens available. Uh, difficulty of 14. I'm going to add 3 to that. Oh, no. I need to add more. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to add 5. This is all a part of your character, I'm going to assume. Yes, I'm going to really turn the charm on. <laughs> the charm was done. You succeed. Great. As the woman looks down. Uh, I'm sorry. I just... Billy's given us a lot of trouble lately. He's a hard time. It makes sense, doesn't it? When you go through a trauma and you're going through puberty, like he obviously isn't right quite there yet. <laughs> but when you call me coma boy, it's like I'm more than that, you know? So, I don't know. Well, Think about prove it. it, coma boy. See, you should, you should you work here. You this is a that. first good step. <laughs> helping homeless kids traveling through town for some reason yeah. Yeah. in need. That's a good first step. Mm -hmm. The rest of you... Yeah. Uh-huh. We're good people, too. Just sign them off and get out of here. Absolutely. I'm Thank just... you. And you know what? I saw a change in you. This is a day for you of change. I, I'm pretty sure after you walk out those doors, my legs still won't work. I mean, when you use that against people in such an aggressive way, you're putting up walls between you and other people. You are not that wheelchair either. I'm going to hug you. You're, there's a glass wall divided between us. <laughs> I see you. I see you. Oh, oh okay. Miss, and what was your name? Uh, she slides a piece of paper from under. Okay. There we go. I signed you out. Let's go, kids. Frank Sinatra. Absolute. Oh, no, that's Fran. Fran Sinatra. Sinatra. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm so excited. I'm Got the jiggles. Okay, let's go, kids. Make sure they're back before final hour, please. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Bye bye. Do I have any tokens? Billy Baker has three tokens available. Mm. Okay. As you make your way out to the school parking lot, you do see parked slightly onto the curb before you make your way into the school a pink Vespa. There is no helmet on the handlebars, of course, but it is parked a little bit up on the curb. Tibby stands outside, hands in the... What is going on? 
Uh, stay here. I'm right here. Well, then give me the walkie back. But... I need you to stay here, dude. Over. Are you all leaving? Apparently. Apparently so. They're signed out. I'm sorry, young small man. I need you to stay here. Well, you didn't sign me out too? She calls you tidbits. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, but I like that one. <laughs> oh. Dude, you're, <laughs> you're a great help. Oh, okay, sorry. You're a great help, but like I said, you're like the, you're like the Alfred to our Batman. We need you to stay here. Something but weird you're taking my walkie. I can't even, like, put up the bat signal. Okay, no, it's keep not the about you, Tibbs, okay? Keep you make it all about you a lot. Wait, why have I had four different nicknames in the last 20 minutes? Because you're that unimportant. We need to go now. <laughs> don't listen to her, Tibby. You're cool. But keep the walkie as we get out there into you're the world. You're hanging out with a bully. We're better than that. I mean. Who wants to ride on my Vespa? I do. I'm not better than that. Great, great. You hop on and you drive your Jeep. Although this outfit would have looked cooter on my Vespa. It's cool. I'm not going to judge. Oh, dang. They don't yeah. know how to drive, though. They're all, like, tidbits, yeah. too, you know? I yeah. know how to drive. I just it was don't your have... car? I know how to drive. L I just don't have a car. Le legally. Oh, hold never on. mind. Real quick. Why? Why? Why are we going with you? Bucket? Yeah, I don't know why I have trust. to. Is he going to be there? No, Bucket sent me to get you. You are the only one I can trust. You well, the we only can't one. trust Bucket. Listen, hey, I am saying I need Billy. You guys are just dingleberries to this situation, quite frankly. How does it feel? How does it feel? I deal with dingleberries a lot. I have a lot of long-cared cats. That's actually a compliment. What? We are cared for, okay? Todd bits. She just turd compared bits. you all to like pieces of shit bit. hanging off of cat fur. Oh, is that what that is? Okay, I'm gonna punch him. I think I'm gonna punch him. No, Billy, don't. can we just I I punch stop him? You. you guys should probably hold me back around and just punch him in his face. Billy, be careful. I am so glad I'm not young anymore. This woman's scary and she smells like lots of bad things. Well, I have don't 85 cats, okay? There's a reason for everything in this world, Tibbs Wool. I, I don't understand. Tibbs, it's okay, man. Just if anything weird happens at school, you hit us up, okay? And All if right. anything weird happens with us, walkie, man. Okay. These have like a mile range. We're oh. going 4.5 miles. Let's go. Oh, shit. Can you, can you come 3.5 miles the direction that we go? But then just stand in the street. And just like stay back. Like maybe the sidewalk. Whatever you want, Billy. Really? Yeah, just go hang out at like the, the ice cream shop or something. Okay. Wait, where do you live? I live way beyond that, but that's cool. Just go there. All right, well. All right. I'll walk you the direction we're going. Okay. I'm this is so long. Can I just cut this I'm right now? I'm just nervous, go? okay? It's, it's, I don't mean to say the wrong thing, but it's just you're old, okay? I am in my mid-30s, and I am not old. That is more One than twice my age. There will be a show for me about four women in the city who can just take anything on, and I won't be irrelevant. I'd watch that. And they'll be covered in cat piss. Say over. Everybody, over. come on. You, whatever your name is, get on here. Let's okay. go. Let's go. You guys meet us at, I'll give you my address. I'll, okay. Here. There. Sky, are you sure you can drive on the sugar rush now? One sec. All right. I want to go to my right and just puke. <laughs> Roll your <laughs> grit difficulty <laughs> of eight. Uh, wait, this one, right? Is that, a D10? It's a D10, yes. Oops. That is it, a was, four. it wasn't in the thing, so I don't think it counted. It counts. No. That's a four. Sky Hawkins has two tokens available. <clears throat> no, I just... I I thought I was going to puke. No, that's not how this oh. works. <laughs> uh, you you failed it. your roll. <laughs> would you like to use those tokens to make it less of a failure, what or would you like to stick with what it? What was the... the what Eight. did I have? Eight. Eight. Ah. Mm. You will fail either way. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Sweet. Let's just, I'm going to add those two to it. Okay. Just in case you end up killing me. You remain conscious as you vomit uh, onto the ground beside, but it's very clear that she is unsafe to drive as she stumbles her way back up and is a little lightheaded and having a hard time walking even slightly forward. Oh. Someone else will most likely have to be behind the wheel of the Jeep. Okay. Sky. Yoo -hoo. <laughs> Sky, give me, mm. let me drive. Yeah, up. actually, you should probably drive. Good I ate a lot of gushers. You're worse than Billy on caffeine. Shut up. Okay, it's true. <laughs> <All right>. I <laughs> feel so sick. Wait, comic book store lady, what's your name? 
My name is Jaina. Jaina. I told you. I know. I just, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm bad. Bad with names. I, I, mean, gotta, I gotta be better about I it. I know. You're not coma boy to me, okay? Thank you. Billy, right? Billy? Okay. Billy. <laughs> can I... Can you fit two people on that on that scooter? Uh, we can try. You know what, Billy? You go. You seem to know her more. I just... I have a lot of questions for her. Okay. You go for you it. You come with me okay. because you're the important one. I don't even know what you're doing here. I want to see if Sky pukes again. true. We could have just veered off and did something else. Am I at my nose? Would this you happened. like to leave? Because you could leaving. just leave. We are leaving. <laughs> Billy's on the back of the Vespa. We I just peel the, away. And I Billy the, grabs onto the back of Cat Lady and they speed off. And then I get in the Jeep and we follow. You make your way into the Jeep. Now, this is the first time that you've ever sat in the passenger seat of your own vehicle. Um. Looking over and seeing Marcus behind the wheel does put you in a constant state of anxiety and fear. Now, as you take off, Marcus Bennett, you make your way about, I would say, a mile down the road. And as you turn a corner, uh, following behind this pink Vespa, trying to keep it within your vision range. Now, there's not many places you can go in the town of Kolok, but she could veer off at any moment. You do see something that catches your eye. A man on the side of the road who appears to be carrying a bag of Cheetos <gasps> as he looks up into the trees. It's the guy. It's, it's Roger. Cheeto man? Yeah. He weighs a lot of out. Cheetos. Marcus, are you keeping your eye on the road? This is my baby. You break it, I break you. Your skull. Are you feeling better? No. I didn't sleep. And I, you guys let me eat all of those gushers and sugar and then almost broke a glass bottle of Yoohoo on my forehead. Are you even my friends? Of course we're your friends. We care about you. We're worried about you. We know you could die in a few days, but... I probably am going to die. The man is getting closer. Don't stop Marcus Cheeto Man. Bennett. He's not important. This cat lady, I think she's on to something. Why do you need to take him out? I don't know. I gotta find out though. Sky, can you can you handle the rest of the drive? Oh God, Mickey. I'd rather take the wheel. You don't okay. even know how to drive. I know how to drive. I just can't legally drive. Okay, for sure. I do all it right. all the time. I'm getting out here. You guys keep following. I don't want Billy to be alone, which in just in case something weird. Okay, Marcus. To be clear, you're getting out and telling them to leave. But just, yes. just Marcus, before you do this, remember about the movies? I told you when we split up, someone dies. So just letting you know, you're crossing it's gonna be that Cheeto line. Man. Crossing that line. Out, right? We're supposed to be together. So, solid there, there, D. But I'm just, there's something about this guy I need to know about it. Dude, if you're hungry, we'll get Cheetos on the way home. It's not about the Cheetos. We'll it's find him. He puts Cheetos underneath my tree at night. But Can't you just wait? The vehicle comes to a stop. We're going to lose the cat lady. I want to charm him. The man looks over. <laughs> oh, shoot. He's looking at me. Sees you. He begins to walk towards the passenger window. Oh, God. We're going to lose the cat lady, Marcus. We're totally going to lose her. A hand gets placed on the vinyl window. Yo, dude, cut that out. I just watched this thing. Do I know you? Wait, I've seen you before. What? I was in your yard last week. No. Was that yesterday? Two days. Three days? days. Your yard has a lot of trees. Why are you placing Cheetos down by them? What? We know about you dropping the Cheetos by the trees. Oh yeah, the Cheetos. It's for the squirrels. Yeah. I talked You're to making them. them thick, I've heard. What? Like they're eating the Cheetos. And no, getting... I talk to the squirrels. The squirrels like the Cheetos. You talk, wait, you talk to the squirrels? Yes. I have lots of conversations with the squirrels. What do they say? That, that I'm their friend. And we are friends. Do you know one named Sketchy? Of course. No, he's, I think he he's just lying. lied. He just lied. I can who, pick up who, on lies. Who are you? We have business. We might know something about, or I'm a, I, Would you like a Cheeto? I don't think she needs to eat anything. She's thinking uh, about them too long. Does he have a bag of Cheetos in his other hand? A whole bag. I want to grab the bag. I have lots of bags of Cheetos. I'm going to grab uh, as many bags as I can. Sky Hawkins rolls down the window. Oh, Sky, <laughs> Sky, no, no. Reaches he out. the Cheetos. And grabs a bag of Cheetos. 
Roger does not react. Oh, God. That's right, Roger. It's take, your take, Cheetos. take the Cheetos. I took them. I love Cheetos. Okay, me too. But why? Like the hot Cheeto kind, too. That's a good kind. Why are you doing this? Some squirrels may not like the fact that you're giving them this mm. processed food. How do you how do you know? Squirrels don't squirrels don't care if it's processed. You or... don't know what squirrels don't care. I thought you talked to the squirrels. You should know what they care about. What? Uh, how is this a trick quit I talk to the squirrels and they're my friend and I'm the, their friend and I feed oh, yeah? them to keep them happy and they follow me and do they help you find clues? Do they help you search for items? Do they help you I'm, get information? I, Marcus, got to do good cop, bad cop right now. We're never going to get rid of this guy and we're never going to go to the cat lady's house to find out what's happening. I think he's just crazy. I don't think he's really talking to any squirrels. Listen, dude. Stop feeding the squirrels Cheetos. Yeah. You're making them fat and they're getting angry. Or, okay? else, or else I'm going to have to take care of you. You know what I mean? No, I'll take care of you. I'll I don't know it. what either of those statements mean. And then I'm going to grab the Cheetos and I'll start crunching them. I'm like, look at this. That was a perfectly this. fine bag of Cheetos. What's going to happen to your bones? If you, eh. Those are Stop. Cheetos, not bones. Is Beating. your friend sick? The squirrels. Yeah, Listen. A little bit. Cheetos. But. The squirrels are just a little too nice to tell you that they're feeling a little self-conscious about their bodies. They'd like some vegetables. How? But they don't want to tell you that to your face. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, they're they, just being polite. Well, yeah, they get, they want other stuff. Is that what you're? What's that the happen- Vegetables. What's happening? Right. N- no one's ever talked to me about the squirrels before. Same here. Oh. Yo, we don't leave this guy soon. I'm gonna slap him. Well, Can we you- get an agreement? Just less Cheetos, more veggies. You- My hand's raising. What do? What do you? What do you? You? You want me to stop being nice to the squirrels? Just variety. Veggies? Just variety. Mm. Those are it's good ex- for you. Those heart. are expensive. I can't afford veggies. I can afford Cheetos in bulk, and they leave them outside sometimes That's a whole different problem behind with the, the economy. grocery store. Grass? Nuts. Those are cheap, right? Why do you all know so much about the squirrels? Let's just say that maybe some of us can get information from squirrels just like you say you can. What is wrong with you? You? He can talk to squirrels. No, he can't. No, he can't. No, he can't. What do you mean he can't? He literally just he said he can't. I can he talk can. to squirrels. I speak to them every day. I'm their friend. Yeah. I bring them Cheetos and small trinkets, and they we follow know, they me around. Really want Cheetos. They are my friend, and you can't take their friendship from me. Mm. That's not fair. Marcus, Don't. let's go. Okay. If you speak to the squirrels... And I just, I just, I just hit the gas. <laughs> and I roll up the window. You're gonna die. Through the rear view, you see the man turns quite perplexed and immediately goes back to exactly what he was doing before. Well, that got us nowhere. Guys, I gotta Throwing be honest. Cheetos I feel... at the bottom of trees. Guys, I feel real honest. I, I, I gotta be real honest with you. I feel bad about squishing up those Cheetos. That dude seemed pretty cool, but I, I was getting real annoyed at the situation. I'm you can sorry. still eat the dust. It's okay. I don't want to touch the Cheetos he touched. That's true. We check in to the Vespa, driving without helmets, down the road back towards the house, when the familiar sound of sirens (gasps) and a quick look in the rearview mirror on the side mirror reveals two flashing red and blue lights. Oh, no. Urging you to pull over. Lady, oh. I think you're in trouble. No, well, oh boy. Well, I gotta get pull over. I can't, I gotta pull over. I need to get you home, but I gotta pull over. I guess I'll pull over. I'll, go, I'll pull over. I'll pull over. I don't wanna pull over. I think you should pull over. I don't think I should pull over. This, yeah, Debbie pull Gibson over the said. Scooter. Debbie Gibson said she needs you. You, listen, if they take me and you have to go to the house, you have Man, to go to the basement. Okay. I didn't lock it. I didn't okay. lock it. Okay. <sighs> the scooter, mind you, was only traveling at about 10 miles per hour, <laughs> very slowly down the road. As you pull it over, pop your kickstand, Billy Baker holding on to you in the front. A police officer gets out of the car and makes his way down towards you. Ma'am? You're not wearing any helmets, and you have a young boy on the back of your... Carl? No, it's Josh, Officer Warstone. Oh, Officer... Who's Carl? Carl, Carl's another officer. He's the one who came to the door to tell me about... Uh... 
Carl hasn't worked on the force for at least six years. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Ma'am. Um, I want to apologize. Uh, I, uh, Billy here... License and registration, please. Of course, of course. There you go. I, I was in such a rush, I forgot my helmet, and I knew I needed to go back in for the helmet, but yeah, I this is, You know, this insurance is... It's expired by four years, ma'am. No. Oh, I'm and, so sorry. Um, uh, you're licensed by two. My husband died, and it's been so hard to keep track of things. I'm so sorry. You know, you shouldn't be driving until you get this taken care of. Absolutely. As soon as I got home, I will take care of this. Uh, excuse me, boy, you... Billy? Billy. Yeah, it's Billy. Hello. He was in a coma. Did you remember this kid? Yeah, we all we all know. We've got a whole bulletin board about how to deal with Billy Baker back at the office. I'm Billy, do you think your parents would like the fact that you're on the back of a scooter without a helmet with this woman who's currently driving without license or registration? I feel like at a certain point when the scooter's small and slow enough, you don't have to wear a helmet. Okay, that's, I know that that's not legal. I am, and I'm a mentor to him. Um, You're a mentor to Billy Baker, ma'am? Absolutely. Uh, wow. We, I do a that's lot of- That's very kind of you. I do volunteer work with animals, and I thought, considering his that trauma- That explains a lot. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll gloss right over that one. Uh, it's just like I could ride my bike faster than the scooter goes, and I never wear a helmet. I've never been pulled well, over. You Billy, should probably you should wear, probably a wear a helmet. You should wear a helmet, because bikes, there's a lot of injuries with bikes. My husband fell into a... Well, that's different from a bike, isn't it? What? <clears throat> Ma'am, I'm, uh... I'm, I'm really sorry to... Just, you know, when we see a kid uh, currently who's supposed to be in school... Absolutely. ...on the back of a scooter... I signed him out with the receptionist, mm -hmm. so you can go check on that. We're doing some volunteer work for some homeless children. But I know him through volunteering with homeless, homeless. children. Mm -hmm. I know it's a very much of an anomaly, and that's why I really had to passing go the through. distance. They were just passing through. Through Kolok? Yeah. Absolutely. They don't. They don't have maps, so they're they're also lost. They're going towards Seattle. Came quite a bit east for that. Absolutely. Do you do you mind telling me the whereabouts of these children? I'd like to send somebody over if you don't mind. They're at the community center. But I was going to my house to get the backpacks that we were putting together for these children. Community center, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. I told them to wait there for me, and I told them that we were going to <laughs> no, put together I, yeah, some I understand. backpacks. I'm going so to send some over to check some, check out on that. We like to keep track of any homeless people Absolutely. that might be making their way through Colock for sure. Well, I'll have Billy back at the school Security in an hour. Security reasons and all. Of course, of course. I'll have Billy back at the school in an hour. That's uh, that's good. Maybe you, you really need to get these. A hundred percent. I'll have to um, call a cab to get him to the school because I definitely would not drive on this. That's right. Wherever you're going, you're going to need to pull this thing over, wait till you get everything updated, okay? Sure. You don't know where Carl went, do you? He was so kind when he told me. Carl retired six years ago. That's right. You told me that. Yeah. It's... I, I, I heard about your husband. Years ago. Um, sorry for your loss. Thank you. Uh, have a nice, have a nice day. Thank you, officer. Thank you, officer. As the officer walks back to his car, he glances over his shoulder numerous times. You see him sit into his driver's seat. You can watch him talk on his radio as his eyes remain fixated on you. He kind of ushers that you're free to leave, but his eyes remain fixed. Quite worried, in fact. All right. Billy, you better be worth this. Uh, okay. I'll see we're what leave. I can do. We're, we're right, we're leaving. The pink Vespa pulls back onto the road and begins to drive away. Marcus Bennett, as you saw in the rearview mirror of the man getting back, do you continue on? Yes. Okay. The Jeep continues driving, and at this point has now caught up with the pink Vespa as you pass a police 
car with the lights still on. As you drive by, you recognize this officer as the same one who came to the library the night before. You all look. Lock eyes. He looks at you. And then continues back to whatever it is he was doing. As you are now following fairly tight, in fact, with the pink Vespa. Whew. Too many people are remembering us and all these things we're doing, particularly cops. This is freaking me out. It's a good thing I wasn't driving. We would have been busted. Yeah, good thing. Uh, I'm glad we didn't lose them. Billy can't be alone. None of us can separate. Marcus, you have to remember that. In the I'm movies, so people die. We can die. I'm sorry. I'm going to die. You're... I'm going to die. We're going to figure it out. Sky, we're not going to lose you. We're not going to let you die. Okay. You're, you know, you're, you're a friend. I mean, we can say that, right? Like, mm, 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 yeah. are you about to throw up again? Wait. I, you can call me your friend. You guys are my friends. Cool. All right. Well, as a friend, we need you around. And whatever we've got to do to keep you around, we promise we're going to make that happen. All right. No pounds of anything are going to be taken from you. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, I should bring I, that I, up. Sorry, I shouldn't have brought it up. I'm sorry. I got nervous about the Roger, Roger guy. God. I'm just going to keep driving. I just slumped down in my seat knowing my fate is probably sealed. <coughs> Jaina pulls into her small driveway. There's room for two cars, but the only thing that sits is the pink Vespa. As you park and get off the small vehicle, the Jeep pulls in behind you as you are all now standing in the front yard of Jaina Grace's house. Um... This is my house, and I'm sorry, the, the, the trash, for some reason the trash. I didn't take care of the trash. Why would I... Did I go to the comic store last week? I must not have. I didn't do it. I didn't go last week, so I don't... We could, we could take the trash out on the way out. That would be so sweet. As you're all walking towards the front door, are passengers besides Billy a little bit behind Billy quite comfortably it seems walking next to Jane and Grace Jenna you're quite surprised as you notice the door is wide open <gasps> a single cat sits just inside the doorway as you approach the door the rest of you you notice many more cats spread out all staring towards this front door. Jaina bends down and begins moving a little bit closer. Jaina, as you peer around the corner, you see your late husband sitting in the chair, ushering you to come in. Jaina walks in. The rest of you begin to follow. But as you walk through this door, it is not, in fact, a room anymore. It's another world. The dark woods. As you quickly turn to look behind you, there is no door. There is only the woods. Surrounding you in all directions. You can see a slight breeze moving but you feel no air. You can see pollen floating, but you smell nothing. This is an unfamiliar place for all of you. What the hell, what, we were at a house, now we're in some kind of woods. You, you guys are seeing this too? Where did my chaise lounge go? That's wow. Miss Biscuit's favorite place to lay. Wait. Oh God, not again. Uh. This is, uh, this is weird for you too, right? This is not where I prepare pancakes. Um, hold on one sec. I'm going to think really hard, uh, and I'm going to use three tokens to use my premonition, if possible. To I will see say if there's any danger. But that is possible, but it will create a reaction like you don't expect. And I know this. You do not. And as we come back to this, momentarily, because for now we're going to take a small break. Oh, jeez. 
and we'll be right back in just a few moments. Hey, what's up, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to Colock 1991. It means the world to me that you're watching, and uh, I, I really, really do hope you're enjoying the show. We've all worked really hard on this. Now, on the show, I'm playing kind of a character as the GM, so I wanted to run you through some things as me, Zach, the producer and uh, co-founder of this company, to tell you all the ways that you can support the show while it's happening live. Something that's really important for us here at Hyper RPG is that you get to be a part of everything we do. Sometimes it's not. Now, all of these shows are paid for directly directly by us, you, you fund them. The audience funds these shows. These are almost 100% funded by the audience. So when you come in and you think, oh, this is really great, think about subscribing. Or you can go to oneshot.straylogic.com and you can get tokens for the players. These tokens allow them to do special abilities that you'll see on their character, uh, their little character blips that come up on screen, or it allows them to boost their dice rolls. You can also add evidence to rumors. This is where you get to a little bit, be a little bit creative. You get to add on special things that you're, uh, you're reading about these rumors you make that up. It's up to you. You get to build onto the world as it's happening. And then we do big giveaways at the end of the show. And when we hit our goal for the show, we also do a giveaway where we bring someone out of the chat and into the game. Now you can go to discord.gg slash hyperrpg to join our Discord role playing room for this show. We actually have people that are set up in our Discord role playing people in the town. And then I'll bring them out of the Discord and put them on the show itself. That's one of the ways you can interact non financially. We also have polls that'll come up during the show and things like that. We're always trying to push the form format here at Hyper RPG to get you involved and make the show a collaborative process between myself, the players, and you in the audience. So thank you so much for watching and for supporting, and make sure to keep watching Colock 1991 every Monday night at 6 p.m. This is not a new story. This is merely another chapter of an endless strife. A tale of blood that's been spilling for millennia. In a fringe galactic arm, centuries-long warp storms cease making its resource-rich planets traversable again and ripe for conquest. The Imperium of Man launch a crusade to reclaim old human colonies established before the storms began. The ruinous powers, knowing of the weakened warp, flood the quadrant, seeking to plague every corner with chaos. The Tau and the Eldari form a temporary alliance to rid the Imperium and the ruinous powers from the untainted galaxy. And the Orcs, drawn to the smell of blood and riches, seek glory through the crucible of battle. The race to control the system begins. This is not a new story, but it is our story. Welcome to the Grim Dark Dawn. Billy Baker goes to reach out to the dark entity. But almost as if he just blinked and he comes back. The rest of his friends are gone. What? No! Sky Hawkins stands alone in the woods. Uh. I shouldn't have put that Yoohoo on my face. 
As you look out into these woods, you see tails bouncing through the weeds, curled at the tip. Ah. Just playfully moving all around you in all directions. Like an anime. Mm. Good. And that is when you see the woman. Hello? She stands with her back turned to you. And in that moment, you recognize this woman. I know you. You recognize her as Rachel, but only through presence. And as she turns, you see an empty face. An empty face like what I had seen when I was in... No. You see a lost memory. A face that's unrecognizable. For you can't remember. Ah. Uh, I, I think I know you. Uh, are Sky? you... Sky? Are you Rachel? You forgot. Well, what do you mean? What... Well, I can't remember. I don't know who you are, but I've been reading your journal and I... I know that you're someone special to me, but... Is it really you? I don't know. I... Am I me, or am I... You're definitely not a cat. Who you can't remember. Well, that's, that's confusing for me, because I don't know. What are you doing to find me? Everything I can, Rachel. What the... What have you done? Rachel, you signed my name. You forged my signature on a contract. No. I had to. No, you don't have to. You don't do things like that, Rachel. I if had you're... to. I didn't say you could. If... You're the only person. The only person that I knew could fix this. That's why you signed my name? Yeah. I'm supposed to find you. I I'm supposed to fix this. I You're supposed to stop the chain. But can you be safe? It carries over. This What's is gone is gone. Rachel, what is this debt? How am I supposed to stop it? It says I'm supposed to do pounds of flesh? I didn't start it. Who did? Was it your dad? I think so. What do you know? What can you do to help me? I only know what you already know because I'm not me. What? I'm what you forgot. Then... How would I know what you are if I've forgotten it? Because this is what you know. It's what you've learned. It's what you've felt. It's what you've pieced together. You have it all inside you. You have everything. Only you can fix it. Are you even real? Is this real? Probably not. I want to run up to Rachel and see if I can touch her. As Sky Hawkins runs forward, arms reached out, a cloud dissipates from around her. Marcus Bennett stands alone in the woods. I hate this. I don't like this. No sign of his friends anywhere. I don't like... I'm always alone. I don't want to be alone again. I don't... I'm always alone. I don't like cats. Marcus? Who's there? It's... Me. Me? Who? Your sister. Dummy. Laura? Laura! Laura, it's you! You've gotten big. Well, look... You have two, I just... I missed you. Where have you been? 
It's been 12 years. I know. Where did you go? What we happened? Just... We thought that you were we thought that you were taken. My parents freaked out. They, they gotta let it go. You have to let it go. I can't let go of you going away. My parents completely moved us here because they were so afraid of Los Angeles after what happened with you. Where are you? How, how, how are you here? Like, I'm gone. What do you mean you're gone? Marcus, I'm gone. I'm just, like, are you, you're, are you dead? Most likely. But then how did you, you just, you gotta let go. Marcus, I can't. I can't. You were, you were my, you were my friend. Not only just my sister, but you were my friend. Like, you're the only person that was a part of my life when my parents were too busy working and when I couldn't make friends at school. I mean, I always put on the facade that, like, everything's cool, but you were the person that really understood and knew me. And without you here, I just, I'm just walking in this life all alone. I couldn't do anything about it. It's not your fault. You didn't do this. And I know you think... I know you think mom and dad will never... love you like they did me, but... give it time. Help them heal. Make them forget. They gotta forget. Just move on. I don't know how. I don't even hardly talk to them. They're always at work. And now we're in this town where just everything is just so weird. They're trying to fix me. To find me. You know it. You've seen the clues. You've thought it. Don't let them. Stop them. It's not worth it. What is this place, Laura? I don't know. And I'm going to try the same thing. I'm going to try to reach out. As Marcus Bennett reaches his arms out, a cloud dissipates. No. No, Laura, come back. Billy Baker called out to the dark entity. The dark entity answered. Billy. Hey, uh... Why did you bring me here? Uh, you know, I think I'm asking you a little too late here, but uh, I was just going to check to see if there was any danger ahead. Uh, and then this happened. There's danger everywhere, Billy. Yeah, but like specific danger to me and my friends. Lots right of here, it. right now. Where are we? You're surrounded in a house. A house of pure evil. Is the, is the cat lady evil? Everything in this house is evil, Billy Baker. Whether it is or wants to be. Even, even the, even the cats? Especially the cats. You embarrass me, Billy Baker. You embarrass all of us. All of us? This is beneath you, Billy. Beneath your capabilities. What are you talking about? These are mere animals, Billy. The cats? Feed off the dark energy. Embrace it, Billy, and you can leave this place the moment you choose to. I want to leave now. Do you, Billy? Yeah. I want to leave now. What do I need to do? Just let me take the wheel. Can I trust you? Of course not, Billy. You suck sometimes. Billy, it's all within you. I am just 
just you, really. We cut to Mickey Jones. You hear a familiar sound, Mickey, as you stand alone in these tall woods. The sound of a drunk father stumbling, swinging. You see him, merely 10 feet away, mumbling to himself. But he holds a gun in his right hand and a bottle in the other. Dad? Mickey. Dad. You left, Mickey. This isn't you. You left me all alone. This is your fault. Why no. do you have a gun? I shot him, Mickey. To protect you. Why? Why did you get in this in the first place? Get in what? This whole mess. Those shoes. Dad, you didn't need to do any of this. We could have just... Left. We could have gotten a different job for you. I... I did. I'm, I'm good at it. I'm good at something. I'm good at... You shot somebody. I, I, I had to, to protect you, Mickey. I, it, was, it was for you, moving here. The job. You didn't have to do anything. All that I ever needed was my dad. I... I don't know how to... I... I don't know how to do that. I think you might have killed him, too. I did. You know I did. Stop lying to yourself, Mickey. You know it. I cleaned it up. I'll never know it was me. And you know that that's why I can't come back. Mickey, I... Sorry. I am too. <coughs> I would do it again if I had to. I won't let them ever come for you. Tell my dad I said I miss him. We cut to Jaina Grace. She sits in the woods quite comfortable, surrounded by her feline friends. Standing above her, her late husband. <coughs> Why'd you bring him here? I, uh, it was, it was, I was at the grocery store and I just thought maybe we could play a, a board game. Maybe like a Monopoly. Remember, Gerald, we used to play Monopoly together on Sunday nights? Yeah, I remember. I told you, whatever happens next is your fault. You did this. Whatever happens to them, it's on you. Just like what happened to me in that wood chipper. I don't know why you say that, Gerald. I wasn't there. I wasn't there, Gerald. I wasn't there when you say those things. They really hurt me, and I wasn't there. I didn't... I told you to keep me locked up. I can't... I... You were... Not to open the door, no matter <sighs> what I said. You let me out. You were down there so long, Gerald. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. You were screaming. I don't know. You need to listen to us. I listen to all of you. I listen to we everyone. I don't listen. are the only ones that can protect you. But when you bring strangers I into this house, we have to do something about it. No, please don't hurt them. They're, they're here to help. They're here to help. But Debbie Gibson needed them. They... 
Who is Debbie Gibson? Debbie Gibson is a singer, and she sings a beautiful song called Out of the Blue, which... And Are you talking about one of the strays? No, she writes her own music. Gerald, she writes her own music. You can't hear her because it's been since you... I just wanted... I just wanted some <coughs> friends, Gerald. That's all I wanted was some friends. And I think that you should just let them go. You don't want attention. If we bring attention to the house, then they'll come and they'll take me away. They'll take me away and no one will take care of you or the cats. They won't take care of you. I won't be around. You won't be able to come with me. You can't come out of the house. You won't. You don't go out of the house, Gerald. I guess we better make sure no one finds them then. No. Gerald. Gerald, I'm going to leave the house if you do anything to these children. If you do anything to these, I'm going to run. I'm going to run. Carl. Carl, I'll go get Carl. Where are you going to run to? Jaina, where in the world are you going to run to? I'll just start running. I'm going to run at you. <coughs> As you run, the man disappears. Gerald! The cats swarm around your feet. You feel them bringing you a comfort. A sense of calm begins to wash over you again as you sit cross-legged in the woods and begin petting cats. Billy Baker, in concert with the dark entity, Do we have a deal, Billy? It's usually with deals. Someone proposes something, and then someone counter-proposes something, and you shake on it. I don't know what... I don't know what I'm getting out of this and what I'm losing. You're unlocking your full potential, Billy. That sounds really cool, and that sounds like everything I've ever wanted. Then what's the problem? What do you get? I get... a voice. Are you, you saying... you think I like being trapped in here, Billy? I want to speak. I want to be spoken to. You would speak through me? Only in whatever way you wish. Billy, I work for you. I'm a part of you. We are connected, Billy. What's my potential? Fast. Vast potential. Vast, Billy. Vast. I fear for you and the danger you are currently in, you and your friends. This house, it means to end you. It knows that I'm here with you. It will eliminate you before you become a bigger problem. You've only ever helped me. My instinct says I shouldn't trust this very deep and scary voice in the back of my head. But you've always been on my side. Deal. Billy Baker makes a deal. <laughs> Our regular passengers begin to feel the illusion breaking free as the world around them begins to crumble like dust. Sky Hawkins, Billy Baker, Mickey Jones and Marcus Bennett stand, awaking in their illusion, in the living room of Jane and Grace's single-story house. It smells of chloride, sulfate, phosphate, sodium, ammonia, and uric acid, the air nearly unbreathable. You're surrounded by 87 
cats, all sitting upright, staring out at our four passengers. But Jaina rises in the midst of these cats, still under their illusion and spell. Miss Shayna. The woods are so pretty this time of night. Jaina, Miss, Miss Grace? Jaina? If I just go walking, maybe I can leave. Maybe Gerald will let me go. Miss Jaina. We can take all of you. We'll go somewhere new. Guys, I think she's still stuck in the woods. We'll go somewhere new. How do we get her out? And we'll find a cave in the woods. If someone tried touching her? I'm afraid to touch her. Her eyes I begin touch her. to glow orange. Oh, oh. shit. Jaina Grace sees before her in her living room her pristine, beautifully well kept living room. Four new strays, wild animals that need a home. Only Jaina can fix them, only she can give them the love that they need. And maybe over time, they will change. Little pretties. I'll name you Snap, Crackle, Pop, and Puffball. She... Which one of us was Puffball? I don't know. Guys, She's... Her, hus know. her husband died, apparently. I heard her telling the cops. I think she's... She's kind of crazy. Died how? I don't know. I think... No, no, her... Her her husband. I read about this in the files. He was, like, deranged or, or crazy. He threw himself into a wood chipper. They I'm, said he was... I'm looking at her, and I'm not thinking that guy threw himself into anything. Well, that's what they said. It, it happened at, like, the, the wood mill. I'll make you some liver semi-fredo. It's a treat for I new think, kitties. I think we're the strays. I, I think ca that... I kind of think... I think, I think that's... I, like... Like, I feel like she's, like, petting me. I'm like, yeah, I think, I think so. I, think. I have a kid. <laughs> Everyone this, come downstairs. This is being said. The cats begin to swarm around you in all directions. Oh, no. No. Billy like Baker this. can feel the energy emitting Ugh. off of these cats. They try with all their might to induce another illusion on you, but Billy Baker is able to keep himself and his friends from succumbing to said illusion. Guys, uh, this is gonna sound crazy, but these cats have like some sort of psychic powers. The cats are the ones that made us see it. And I don't know how, but I'm keeping them from doing it right now. I'd like you to come downstairs, little kitties. Not There's happening. There's a special place for you. No. A special place. Guys, we need to get out of here. We have here. to get out of this house. Yes. Billy needed to see, they needed to see Billy. Debbie Gibson is down there. Where's Billy? You should check on Debbie Gibson. I don't think she can hear us. Jaina Grace cannot hear you. She sees in front of her merely strays. Now, as this is all being said, and she mentions going down to the basement, Marcus Bennett, you do see out of the corner of your eye in the hallway, the long hallway, a door that is open. This door on one side of its prompt open doorway, you see multiple locks. On the other, you see scratches. These are not cat scratches, though. They look like the scratches made from human fingernails. And you hear the sound of human cries coming from downstairs. How many tokens do I have? Mickey Jones has four tokens available. Can I use three to be scrappy and build a weapon? Mickey Jones is going to use three tokens. She picks up a vase next to her, breaks it. Kitty! And takes a sharp end of the vase. I think I'm a bad kitty now. Which might be a problem. Crackle. Why did you do that Tell to her Mama's I'm crackle. face? Tell her it's just your claws. She's not going to hear me. Yeah. Know, guys, no, she's guys. She's talking to the cats. Guys, guys, guys. She thinks we're cats. Look at that door. Those are not cat scratches, those are human scratches. There are people down there. Or what if she's seeing cats, but they're actually people? There's something weird going on here. I want to break through that door. Marcus Bennett is going to roll his fight. Ooh. Difficulty of eight. Fight? Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, no, three. Can I support him? Marcus Bennett has eight tokens available. Oh shoot! Just please. <laughs> All right, I will. I will use five. 
Marcus begins running towards the basement door, and as he does, he hears a voice in his head. Marcus. Marcus Bennett, I can feel your presence. The baker boy, he brought you. I must speak through you, Marcus. Who is this now? It is Agent Bucket. Agent Marcus. Bucket? Oh my god. What? I'm in the basement. You're in Marcus. The... Okay. Myself and 11 others. All right. Well, I'm going to let you out, but if I let you out, you got to answer some questions for me. And no butterscotch this time. I will do my best, Marcus. But I believe this will have to be our new form of communication. Well, I've got squirrels talking to me, so this ain't nothing new. So I use my 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 side my side girth and break the door open. The door was already open. I knew that. But you I were just, able to see I just both did it sides anyway, of the door. To be like, you bust through. Hey, no, uh, I broke open the door. Given that you were able to succeed in your fight role, what you do avoid is the onslaught of cats that begin jumping in your general direction. No! As the cats begin to hiss and jump around your body. You can see, Gina Grace, these cats are quite upset by these new strays. These no new strays kitties. are not getting along at all. These kitties have to go in the cages. These snap, crackle, pop, and puff balls. No, no, Luckily, we're, we're good kitties. You are bad little kitties. We're the best kitties. Luckily for you, Snack has already made his way over towards the basement door. See, Snack She's wants just to gonna go lock down. us down there. Can you roll your fight for me, Gina oh, no. Grace? Oh, Difficulty no. of no. 10. No. Now you have very low fight. Oh, a one. <laughs> <laughs> Jaina only has six tokens available. I stick with a one. Yes. As Jaina Grace begins walking towards you, the onslaught of cats that are trying to cause you harm also slow her down as you see her trying to make a beeline for you Kitty. at the top of the stairs. What do you do, Marcus? I'm, run I'm running downstairs looking for, looking for wherever Bucket is. So you do run down the stairs. What would the rest of you like What's to do? What's around us? You are in a room of nothing but cats. There's a, but it's a living room. It's her exact. living room, right? It is the living room, what, correct. What, like, furniture? What, like... A couch and two lazy boy chairs. Um... No television. No television. Mm. Okay. And she's... How far away is she from me? I would say she's merely around ten feet. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Um, I'd like to, is there a cushion? A couch cushion? Uh, most likely, yes. I like to grab a couch cushion and throw it at the bottom of her feet so she can get tripped up and fall, just to slow her down. I am now going to have the two of you roll your fight against mm -hmm. each other. Oh boy. I don't know what your fight is. Oh, T10. Oh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of fight, <laughs> got muscles. Oh, a one. Oh, Jesus, please help me. Five. Now, I would be unfortunate for me not to mention that Sky Hawkins does have six tokens available, and Ooh. Jaina Grace has six tokens as well, so. Oh, well, I actually got six, because it's plus one. That is correct. So Five, there's almost no way that she can win this. You run over to the couch, mm. picking up one of the cushions, as upon doing so, some of these cats start to make a beeline directly towards you, but you throw this cushion as it slides from underneath your feet, sending you flying to the floor as you hear the squeal of a couple cats that you land on moving out from you in all directions. This takes you by surprise. You can't even understand where that cushion came from. Surely it wasn't one of the strays. That's not possible. What? Little Mittens, are you okay? Oh my goodness, no wonder Lace has lost that toe. There's something in this house. There's something in this house. What's going on here? Guys, don't hurt her. Guys, I think she's the source. I think she's the source of what all these cats are feeding off of. Marcus Bennett makes his way down. He turns the corner. There's one kind of hanging light bulb. It's midday now. Now there's some gleaming light coming in through a window, but it's a little bit hard to see. As you click this light on, you see 12 bodies all in separate cages. These people naked, <gasps> bruised, collared. Oh my gosh, she's into some freaky stuff. They're crying, reaching out for help. As their hands reach against the sides of the cages towards you, you see that 
their throats have been clawed, <gasps> scratched, ripped open. No. The blood dried over them, their bodies soaked in it. Now, Agent Bucket, his wounds look quite fresh, as the blood is still wet in the bottom of his cage. Is there anything around me to open the cages? You will have to look. Roll your brains. Difficulty of 12. As you are doing so, you hear the voice continue through your head. Marcus, don't hurt Jaina. This, she does not know what she has done. It's not her. We're trying, we're trying, but she's, she thinks we're cats now. I rolled an eight, by the way. Marcus Bennett has three tokens available. Um, okay. Can I, can I, I have how many tokens? Three tokens available. Can I try something? Actually, that is four tokens available. May, nice. I, may I try a thing? Describe it for me, please. So, I have uh, three to tokens to use my mom's gold Amex card, but I want to use it to, to break open, like, the, the like lock pick the, the locks of the cages. Uh-huh. <laughs> It's a yoo-hoo situation. <laughs> yes, I'm quite curious what kind of locks you think these are on the I don't know. Pages. I just I figured that there'd be some way to like, like swipe them open and like, boom, there we go. I should specify for you that they are padlocks. Okay, that was all right. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> then I, I will, so I only have eight. I only have, it's a difficulty of 12. You have, you rolled oh, an I, eight. Oh, I have four now, right? Yes. Okay, then never mind. Then never mind. <laughs> this was a useless conversation. You see a long shovel at the bottom of the stairwell. As that you works. take that shovel, you are able to run up and bang it against Bucket's cage. Seems like a good idea. Upon doing so, he starts to kind of back himself to the back of the cage, his hand holding on his wounded throat. Um, the there... smell in this basement is quite intense as well, and as you're doing so, you have to keep one hand over your mouth to keep from getting yourself nauseous. I'm going to go back upstairs quickly. Mickey and... Billy, what are you doing? Guys, don't hurt her. Just she just because she's crazy doesn't mean that's all there is about her. But all the cats are following her. We either need to get her out of this house or do something to constrain her. She's going to put us in cages. She locked people in her basement. I'm going to pull out the um, Polaroid and take a picture of myself. What is and wrong as it with you? develops. Okay. You do so. And um. then I want to show her the picture. Look! Miss Jaina, it's me. Um, Jaina Grace, roll a, we'll call it a grit. Difficulty of 10. Six. Jaina has six tokens available. Uh, what was it? Six tokens available. What do What's I need to do? 10. Uh, okay, I'll use four. I'll use four of my tokens. You start to get a vision of something piercing through the illusion. It's moving in front of your face, surprising you, shocking you in a way. It appears to be a photo of some kind hovering. Every time you start to get a tighter look at it, it disappears again. Billy Baker, you recognize that she is getting a small view of this Look, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a cat. I'm a person. You're seeing, you're seeing us as cats, but she we're not. She cannot hear a word that you're saying, Billy Baker. Is there someone there? Guys, I'm. Is I there think someone here? I I'm can't. gonna try something, and it might not go well. But Tibby's on the other line. If anything happens, uh, uh do I have any tokens? Billy Baker has five tokens available. I want to grab her by the head and put my head on her head and just try to reach out to my potential that they were talking about. Billy Baker is going to use all five of his tokens to do so. As you place your forehead against hers, Jaina Grace, what does he see in your mind? What is a day in Jaina Grace's mind like? What does he encounter in there? There's a lot of chicken. I'm grinding chicken and pouring milk and brushing, 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 brushing. And Gerald, Gerald's there. 
Gerald. Gerald's saying horrible things to me. He's saying horrible things to me and he won't go away, but I, I can't make him mad. Because I did it. I made him. I made him fall into the wood chipper and I'm so, so sorry. But everybody needs their milk. So I'll just get milk. I'll get their milk and what is... There's what? a small boy, Billy Baker, standing beside you. Who is this? Appearing. Billy? Sharing a space inside you. Billy... Billy... Cole Mc... No, it's Billy. What are you doing here? Where... I, I don't really know how that works. Uh... Hey, um, so I can see all this, and, uh... You know what we were talking about earlier? Debbie like, Gibson? No, no, more, more than that. You were, you were really helping me out with all the, with all the, you know, self-help stuff. I hear you more than your coma. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes, I remember that. That guy. Uh, no offense to your late super dead husband, but he's he seems bad. Uh, you it's don't you okay. don't have to you don't have to feel bad and you don't have to see him. It's no. We could go. We no, could get out of he here. No, he needs me. He, no, he, he can't do anything. He doesn't need you at all. And these these cats, they don't need you. They all need me. They're just, they're they, so lost. They just need to be fixed. That's all. They just need to be fixed. It's my fault, really. It's my my fault. They're not well. They need you. They need you out there. Billy Baker, while inside her mind, recognizes a dark energy that surrounds her. This energy is not like your own. It's sinister. And the cats begin to swarm by the thousands inside her mind, creating a dark void around you in all directions as you merely stand in the black, you and Jaina Grace. You feel their hold on her. They feel threatened by you, Billy Baker. They want you to leave, and they will make you do so by any means they may have necessary. Get out. Get out, Billy. No. You have to leave me. No. I can't. These animals are beneath me. A guy in my head said so. I'm crazy, too. We're going we're gonna to get out of here, and these stupid cats are going to leave us. These cats are stupid. There are real cats out there, not in your head, and they're cool. What about the, the strays in the basement? I have to take care of the strays. Ali, I can fix the strays, Billy. Billy, they're so lost. They're so lost. They just need someone to pet them, and I, they'll be fixed. I don't want to shatter your world right now, but you thought I was a stray, so I got a, I got a feeling the strays in the basement are actually people. <gasps> Billy what? Baker would like to do what? Um, do I see cats all around me? Thousands closing mm -hmm. in the void, the dark void of their bodies. I've never blocking out the energy touched in her a mind. cat. I've never even seen a cat before. I'm so sorry for what I'm about to do. I start kicking cats. We're going to call this symbolic in a way. Yes. Uh, you see yourself kicking the cats. In reality, you're releasing their hold. Mm-hmm from her. Billy Baker, you will roll your um, well this is a mental ability. We'll call it your brains. Difficulty of four. Two. Billy Baker has zero tokens available. Can I give him some wine? Sky Hawkins sees Billy with his forehead pressed against that of Jane and Grace. And the cats begin to swarm him, clawing at his legs. His legs begin to bleed, but he doesn't react. He stands motionless. They're now biting at his ankles. How would you like to help? Is there a blanket on uh, one of the um, thingies, the recliner chairs? Probably sure. is. She's a cat lady. Most definitely. Okay. I'm gonna hand grab knit. hand knit, yeah. I'm gonna grab one of the hand knit blankets, and I'm gonna run over to Billy and start pushing the cats as gently as I can, because you know I don't want to hurt these animals. But pushing them off of him and wrapping the blanket around uh, his legs as the to try and create some sort of barrier between them and kind of push them off as I'm getting probably. If you would like here. this to work, no oh, gun. I'm gonna require you to use all six of your tokens. Can I? It, my protector thing doesn't work for that. 
That is correct. Oh, yeah, baby. And that is how many tokens? Three. Three. And Billy needed two more to succeed. Yeah. So we will say a total of five tokens. That's exactly what happens. As you start to feel your power taking hold, as the cats begin to rescind, and Jaina Grace's mind, Jaina, your eyes open as you see Billy Baker's face pressed up against yours. He's straining, fighting for you. As you pull away, Billy, you are awakened. You feel the pain entering your legs. Oh, okay. As you see Sky swinging this bag around with cats, moving them away from your general location as blood trickles down your shoes. Uh, Gina ow. Grace, you see your dilapidated house, your stained walls, your stained couch, these cats lashing out. You look over down the hallway and you see the open door to the basement. You feel a deep, dark fear enter your chest as you recognize the human scratches on the inside door of the wall from that of your late husband. Someone's in the basement. Instinctfully, you run in that general direction. You make it five steps down, and that's when you see it. The people you've kept trapped in these cages. Twelve bruised, naked bodies. Some of them young, some of them old. Marcus Bennett, as you break open the cage, you turn and you recognize in another cage, Mr. Thomas, as his eyes swollen, his face bruised. It takes you a minute for it to register. As he's gulping for air, his hand reaches out. A sign for help. Is there anything that, around that I can put on their necks? Yes. Of course. Okay. There's all sorts of fabric, I would say, hanging along the side of the wall, sometimes to keep the light out. Yeah. So I want to start ripping the fabric down, and just with each person, I want to, like, wrap around fabric around their neck just to stop the bleeding. As you run around and you start banging on these cages, Jaina, I'm going to need you to roll your grit, a difficulty of 15. Jaina only has two tokens available. The weight of what you've done, of the reality you now see in front of you, it's more than you can handle as you crumble, holding your knees at the bottom of the steps in shock. Oh my god, I can't do it, I can't do it. Can I use the, the walkie-talkie to call Tippets? Of course. Tibby, are you there? This, this is Tibby. You forgot to say over. Shut your mouth, please. Get the cops over here quick. Okay. Okay, good. I want to run down to the basement to see what's going on. Sky Hawkins turns the corner and runs down the basement. And you see the people as well. Mr. Thomas, Agent Bucket, and many others you cannot recognize. Mickey Jones, what are you doing? Uh, I've just had my smashed vase and was keeping the cats back. As the rest have moved down to the basement, you stand at the top of the stairwell. And they begin to flood these cats. All 87 of them moving in your general direction, their teeth out their hair raised. It's quite clear you would not be able to hold them off. It's quite clear that even the whole lot of you could probably not hold them off and that you will be overwhelmed. (sighs) 
Would you like to share that information? Uh, or will you hold it to yourself? No, I'm going to go ahead and shout. Uh, guys, there are way too many cats. We'll never be able to take them on. So I'm going to uh, run back upstairs then. As you run up to the top of the stairs, you see them all fixated on you. You, too, understand. This is more than you can handle. Can I... Uh, do I see... Do I see Jada? At the bottom of the stairs. Yes. In the basement. I want to, like... I want to pick her up and take her with us if we're heading out. Heading out? Y- like, like leaving the house? You're going to have to get through a wall of cats to do that. <laughs> I, uh. I'm aware. <laughs> so I don't want like, to stay in the woods. You would like to try. I would like to try to get... To start to form a, a space with my with my body through the cats because I'm the biggest dude. And all the people are but free I, right now, right? Yes. The people are being let out. I would say not all of them. If someone wants to take over what Marcus was working on. I'll take over. Marcus, you have to get Jaina to help you. She controls these cats. Maybe okay. they'll listen to her. Jaina. <laughs> Get away! Get away from me! I'm awful! No, 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 Jada, this was not your fault. It's not your fault, but we need your help, okay? We need your help. We need you. These cats will not let us out here. You're the only one, apparently, that can talk to them. Can you please help us get out? Which, which cat, which cat are you talking to? Run. Run, all of you, run. Run. And I run down into the basement, and I call the cats to me. I'm down there. A lot of people are still down there. Who's it's a one way. All nope. the people. I thought they went up. They just... did not go up. You would have to take them up through the wall of cats God. that I said are Too currently blocking cats. your way and overwhelming you or about to. I okay. I run outside. Uh, you would also have to get through the wall of cats. You are all currently in a basement with a hallway in front of you where the cats stand at the top. Okay. I Wait, will make you this. Know, okay, that's clear now. Yes. <laughs> so in the basement, she was standing at the top of the stairs. With Timmy the wall called of cats. the cops. So I'm at the top. Yes. The semi-fredo. What? Yes. They can't resist the semi-fredo. Yes. There are four freezers in my kitchen. We have to get the semi-fredo out. But how do we get past these cats that are right here on the steps? Can I start, like, stabbing away towards the kitties. kitchen? Kitties! Kitties! Wait, wait! Kitties! Miss Jaina, wait, before you do that. There's a wall of cats! It's better be important! You told, you told me to come here, and you said somebody told you to. There's still a wall of cats! Who kitties told you to? Kitties, come to the kitchen with me. I'm locking all the kitties up in the bath, in the basement. They're all the bad kitties are locked in the basement. And we're going to go to the kitchen to have semi-fredo. Jaina Grace will roll her charm, difficulty of 17. Oh, guys. Do I see a uh, Perry Bucket down there? If you've made your way to the basement, then yes, you do. Cool. <laughs> Three. Jaina calls out to the cats, trying to compose herself in a way that they might believe, but they feel that their illusion is broken. They understand that they are no longer in control, and that the best option for them is, as they told you, to eliminate the threat. Jaina? Yes. It didn't work. They don't believe me. They don't believe me. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. And then I just sl- start slashing my skin. No. Oh, God. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll eat me. Maybe they'll eat me. Jaina. And you guys can get away. Slash. Oh. Slash. Jaina, stop. Stop it. Don't do this to yourself. Get out. Save yourself. Jaina Grace will roll her fight. Difficulty of 20. Oh, my God. Your fight's a d4, but that does explode. It explodes. What? Five total. Five total. Mm. Jaina Grace begins cutting at her own skin. The blood begins to flow from her body as she feels herself becoming weak. She begins to lose consciousness as the blood quickly escapes from her veins. She falls 
Athena. Unresponsive. Uh, oh God. Uh, we got to keep the cats away from her body. That I, I don't want that to work. So I'm gonna take the rest of the fabric and like wrap around her just to. Do you try to cover her wounds or just wrap her body? Yeah, like like cover. Yes, cover her wounds and then I'm like go- stop the bleeding. Yes, I want to cover her wounds, but then I, and then I want to just. Your parents are her. doctors. I will let you roll. With brains, difficulty of ten. All right. One. Oh. God. As you touch her body. You feel that her pulse has stopped. Oh. (laughs) Jana Grace is dead. No! At the bottom of the stairs. No! What? The people in the cages don't seem to mind too much. I want to run over to uh, Perry. Are are all of them out by now? Because I've spent this time getting all of them out. I will say all of the people are out of the cages. And they're able to stand on their own? Some of them. Some of the more recent captives. Others have been trapped in those cages, some of them for six or seven years. P- Puckett, why did, why did you want me here? Do you need water? They can't speak, man. Uh, he can speak. Marcus. He can speak through my head. What? Marcus. What? Yes. I knew Billy Baker could release her from their spell. Billy Baker could release from the spell. But this we now encounter is a problem of numbers, a problem of physical strength. How do we get out of here? What do we need to do? I do not know, Marcus Bennett. Apparently you have some power that can help to release her, but... Geez. Yeah, I, I did that. I, it was it was pretty crazy. Yeah, but then what? I don't I know how to work. What are, ca- are cats afraid of anything? Can you wake up Jaina and ask her? I There's don't... windows in the basement, right? Yes, there okay. are. I want a okay. small one. A right. small ground level window. Could I fit out of it? No, most definitely not. Guys, I think I know a way to get the cats to not notice us. And so I'm just gonna uh, call out. What's he doing? Marcus Bennett. (laughs) A lot of questions. Will roll his brains difficulty of 10. (laughs) I need to win. Five. Marcus Bennett has two tokens available, oh. but you all, I will say in this instance, the people that could help him are Mickey Jones and Sky Hawkins. I will help him. I'll help him. Mickey Jones has nine tokens available. Oh my God. Okay, She'll I'll give him, him the most. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll give him as many as he needs. Now remember, succeeding in this game is a sliding scale. If you go over, you succeed much better. How big of a win Mickey, do you want? Mickey, give me a... I, you want them all? I'll give you them all. Come on, buddy. You can have them all. You get all nine. <laughs> you see what he's trying to do. If you would like to help, you're going to have to join him. Uh, join me. What Mickey. kind of noises are these? Just talk squirrel. Squirrel? Do it. Trust me on this <laughs> <laughs> They begin calling out. There's no way that's what it sounds like. <laughs> you don't know. Do you you want to try? Squirrel. You should have used your power. Now, this Jane is, is dead, okay? This is the last mm. resort that we have. She's dead? You, 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 she's not moving. The cats begin to swarm at the top of the stairs. Mickey, as she's moving backwards with the vase in hand, Marcus holding the dead body of someone who is stupid enough to cut her own wrists <laughs> at the bottom of the stairs. There's still a chance. <laughs> And that's when you hear it. <laughs> Would you like to also add to this success? They uh, may need the help. Yeah, how many tokens do I got? You have one, but every little bit helps. I'll do my little one. Do your one. 
that works. <laughs> Billy Baker confused at the bottom of the stairway. This is the worst idea. <laughs> You don't get to talk. You can't talk to squirrels. Bless, you got a better idea? Why are you bringing a squirrel? Cats like squirrels. Oh. Oh. You hear the sound of the ground rumbling beneath your feet. You feel a vibration. (laughs) Wait, how many squirrels did we call? All of them. (gasps) The ground of the earth moves. The cats stop. They start to back away from the door as their attention turns to the front of the house. They begin moving in somewhat of a half circle towards the front entrance of the houseway. Hissing. You can see first you, Mickey Jones, standing at the top through the front outer entrance, the door still open. An army. A number far too high to count. (laughs) And for a brief moment, you feel this sense of victory, of accomplishment. That is, until the two forces meet and the blood begins to fly. Oh, God. Oh, Oh, no! no. (laughs) As you hear the sounds the horrid sounds of animals screeching in pain. Jesus Christ, what have you guys done? The sound from the basement of the squeals and the rustling and the tearing of the fabric of the carpet, the wood of the house dismantling from around you as the squirrels swarm. We owe As they gnaw the bones of these cats, removing them limb from limb. Oh, the the squirrels are taking the cats. Oh, shoot. All right, everybody, we got to start getting out of here. Let's go. As Sketchy moves through the crowd. You call me bitches? (laughs) High five, Sketch! Yes, Sketchy! I've never been more excited to see you. What is he saying? We've been looking all over for these babies. Thank you for finally giving the chance for us to reign supreme. Thank you so much. With the cats out of the way, there's no one left to stop us. Uh Uh-oh. And this town will be ours. Okay, that sounds a little... Ours like, forever, that baby. Sound, that doesn't sound as good. That does not sound... Ours forever. That doesn't sound as good. You should have okay. gotten rid of the Cheeto guy. Gosh, now you tell me. As the sound settles, you are left with mayhem. The bodies of many dead cats. With a couple squirrels thrown in, but their numbers were vast. Yikes. You hear the sounds of sirens coming from the distance as multiple cars pull up into the front and the squirrels disperse. We gotta talk later, baby. Sketchy out. He's definitely in the gang now. Yeah. Um, and we are 100% sure that Jaina is dead. That's what happens when you cut your wrists and roll 15 (laughs) below your your desired roll. So there's no, there's no like... And that's what happens when you roll to save said person and fail by 10. (laughs) That person is dead in the system. There's no, okay. I want to use my go back in time powers. You don't have those. Because I, you know, I do have quick healing, but I don't know if that, I don't know if death counts in that. As you see an officer moving towards the front door, at this point, the people have moved up through the stairway, some of them exiting as quickly as they can, jumping over the bodies of the cats, running out towards the police officers as they stand in awe at the front doorway. Is there another exit out of the house besides the front doorway? Would you like to run from the cops in this moment? (laughs) You need only tell me if you would like to. You're on your own. Uh, (laughs) Fingerprints are everywhere, dude. Okay. It was all her. She's dead. Just blame it on her. All right. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. They could write out their testimony. Okay. I'm stay. I I am not running from that question. No. We we should get we should get Miss Jane into a doctor. Billy. She could just be unconscious. Billy. An officer. Officer. Warstone. Is this the same one that stopped us earlier? Yes. Walks inside. Sees you, Billy Baker. Dear God. Yeah. You should get some ambulances here. For the 
What happened to these people? It's a long They story. were being kept in the basement. Agent Bucket comes out from behind you all, places a hand on the officer. He's wrapped one of the sheets from the windows downstairs around his body. He points to his throat. The man, the police officer, recognizes him. The officer nods. Bucket points to Marcus Bennett. He can speak through me, officer. Tell him, Marcus Bennett. Yes. I will write a full report of what has happened. Agent Bucket will find a, write a full report on everything that's happened here. Bucket nods with the officer. The officer starts to step back. Looking down at the ground and the destruction and all of the people that surround him. Another officer walks towards the stairwell, gun drawn. As he looks down to the bottom, he sees the body of Jaina Grace bleeding out on the ground below. And the smell that emits from the basement causes him to pause. And they know whose house this is. They see the cages. They have an idea of what's happened here. Sky Hawkins stands in the basement, nods to the officer, who nods to her. They understand that you all have seen something terrible today. They refrain from asking you questions in this moment. But Sky Hawkins, before you leave, you notice something. There's a lot of pounds of flesh everywhere, right? Not exactly. Dang it. You notice on the steel beam that holds this house up, a symbol. A symbol you recognize. An upside down you with two dots. From Rachel's journal. And then you also notice how odd it is that a solid steel beam rests in this basement made of wood and concrete. You take note as you walk your way out, stepping over the body of Miss Grace, as the officers have now placed a blanket on top of it. They've gathered you all out at the ambulance covered you in blankets. Now Officer Warstone has informed you that he will need you to answer questions. Lots of them. But for the moment, your parents are all on their way to collect you. All of them. Great. And that is where we will end tonight's <laughs> episode of Colock 1991. Thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you so much for your contributions. And thank you for Felicia killing off one of our chat NPC members <laughs> all on your own. Nicely done. I've never seen her roll that bad. Yeah. I, that was really bad. It was really bad. Was really can, cool. we, can we add an in memoriam at the end of it? Yeah, this like, episode? <laughs> I really wanted you to get out of this. You were such a tragic character. Oh, that was really I sad. I mean, I didn't actually mean. I was kind of. I, I I meant that I was ripping with my. I understand. Nails and did, I didn't really think I would decided. go so deep. You yeah. know, I have. Re I must have had Lee press ons or something <laughs> to really get that deep. That I would just really shred. Ooh. Um. That's rough. You know what? It's what I was, was gonna meant let, to be. I was gonna let you live too it if Marcus could have decided. It wasn't going to be a good future for me, you know? <laughs> Keeping just, people in cages. No, you probably would have been arrested. Yeah, she's going sure. to jail. Yeah. For sure. I would be in a comfortable sort of, like, mental health facility. Perhaps. She's in a heaven now with a lot of cats. Yeah. I oh, not, in <laughs> not in this world. Oh. Not in this world. You can't even let her have that. No. Nope. Yeah. Mm, no. You'll you might, meet me in hell one you, day. <laughs> no, I was going to say you might meet her again somewhere, but not hell or heaven for that matter. Yeah. Um, oh, God. We got worse places than both of those. Oh, yes. good. What a great time. Thanks Thank for having me. It was very fun. Uh, really
really appreciate you you hanging out uh, and bringing your your trademark uh, chaos everywhere you go. <laughs> um, Not profanity though. <laughs> I kept that one under wraps. Which wow. is surprised you didn't even have to. Yeah, yeah. went for I it. I really liked your character. I'm sad she's gone. Mm. Yeah, I know. Sorry, Gaika. That was that was Gaika's character from uh, the NPC uh, room. Uh, uh, she was the one that won the NPC giveaway last week. Did a great job. Uh, <laughs> what a, what a congratulations! Win. You have to make a new character. Uh, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> I am going to pull I up. Tried, uh, I, um, I was gonna like use my ability, but last I heard, I had one token added. None of it. Now. Yeah. I know the tokens are all over the place. I'm Thanks, guys. Well. I know I was helped. I mean, I was rolling really badly. So yeah. without tokens, we would. I've seen even less of you. Yeah, that helped. Well, I would like to thank all the individuals that supported tonight's show. So I'm going to quickly read off your names and your messages that you sent in the chat through your support. Metis Fodum for Sky. Finlay thank Shards you. for Jaina. Might need more than nine lives tonight. Have fun, Felicia. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> prolific. Uh, oh, yeah. Man. Maybe she has cat powers that can have eight more lives. I used <laughs> ten. <laughs> you used all ten. I used all ten <laughs> lives. <laughs> Phil K. Turner, let's do this. Marcus, Mickey, Billy, Jaina, and Sky. Woo, Real nerdy you. Batman. Billy, giving Billy a token and an extra cup of coffee to push him through this episode. <laughs> nice. Oh, nice one. Thank Game you. of Joe B. Token for the little. Sh I mean, Billy. Uh, <laughs> hey, man. Winston EXE. Hello, Jaina. Here's a little help from Hyper RPG's Evil Eye Eye. Aw. Tell sorry hi for me. Oh, great. Uh, J Pistol. Rumor two for all the town talks about arts and culture being so important, we all know where the money goes. Sweetheart deals for Kolok Institution Synchronicity. But now I hear oh. people worried they're going to get laid off. How greedy is that company? Um, Jofe's Manhon. Manho. Sorry, I'm probably mispronouncing your name. Sorry about that. Um, here's to Marcus, who has to adopt all of Jaina's cats in his mansion if she can't take care of them. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> my parents are going to kill me. <laughs> Sagittopian, Mickey, Jabberwockied, the city council is calling a town meeting. How long has it been since they've done this? I'm not sure if we should be scared or not. Triple G two on one for Marcus. HXC Mike. Marcus to help the squirrel with anything he asks. Mexican Robin. Build for NPC. I think we need to bring Josh Warstone back to help these kids out. Seems like they need someone to help connect the dots. Oh, cool. Hmm. HXC Mike, in service to Hypnocat. I, I mean, Debbie Gibson. I mean, <laughs> Bubbles. I mean, must obey Hypnocat. Uh, J Pistol, Jaina, save Debbie Gibson. <laughs> oh, oh, man, this is sad. Phil K. Turner, you're more than your coma, Billy. Oh, oh man. That was Thank such a nice so moment. I like that. WCH, Billy, good luck today, coma boy. Uh, Elaki, rumor three, it's taken the town council long enough to act. Finally, they need to tell us what's happened to all the cats. It's about time they hold a meeting. Well. MD884, Sky, did bully survive death or dismemberment three times now? Stop getting punched in the face, Tokyo drifting and squeezing glass bottles. Well, what can uh, I say? <laughs> <laughs> Billy, be safe around all those cats. Mr. Fantasy, oh, Sky will need these tokens when she crashes from all the sugar. Oh, God. <laughs> Erdens, I love watching Kolok. This one is one of the best TTRPGs I've seen, and it keeps Aww. getting better. Felicia's doing an amazing job. It's always great to see her. Rumor three, I know that some crazy stuff has been happening, but a public city council meeting? Really? Uh, death warmed uh, over. Thoroughly enjoying this. Fajita Phantom. Jaina, hope this helps. Thanks for stopping by lovely Kolok. The show is amazing and helps make my week so much better. Thank you, Hyper RPG. You do so much and I appreciate all you do. I wouldn't be on Twitch if you were not around. Thank you. Um, Gird it. Sky, Megan's going to need as many tokens as possible. Gird it, my boy. Mel Pomeno, you're going to need these tokens to fight those cats, Sky and Marcus. Kurt Cole. No message. So thank you, Kurt. Kurt Cole. Uh, Phil K. Turner. Bad kitty. Hashtag Mickey. Jay Pistol. <laughs> I'm a bad you go scrappy. I'm a bad hashtag kid. Mickey. Uh, Sepowin. Love to the best studio on Twitch. Sagitopian for Marcus. Edazo10. Thank. Uh, token for Billy. I have a feeling he might need this. Oh, Elaki. Billy needs those tokens. Stat. Those demon vision kittens won't kick themselves. <laughs> <laughs> WCH. Marcus. Save the bucket. Kurt Cole for Jaina. And um, Shadow Uzumaki, I live. I mean, Mr. Thomas lives. Yes, Mr. Thomas did survive <laughs> at the end of the day, but he is now voiceless. That's sad. 
and mm. we'll see if he ever makes it home after everyone's checked into the hospital. Um, thank you all so much for your support. Uh, thank you again so much, Felicia, for joining us tonight on this crazy little RPG. And of course, thank you to all my players. Uh, we are here every single Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time, and it gets real weird every single week. Uh, make sure to tell your friends about the, sh- uh, the show uh, on Twitter with hashtag Colock1991. Uh, tweet at us and use that hashtag with your favorite moments from tonight's show and, and let us know what you think. We really appreciate it. And yeah. I-, I, think that- I think that's about it. We have the f- uh, season finale of Joe Starr's He Left It Dead uh, tomorrow night. You should check that out. And Wednesday we have Rat Queens, of course. Uh, so you should definitely tune in for Rat Queens. And uh, I believe that's it. Oh, oh, I would be yelled at by my boss. <clears throat> Patreon.com slash HyperRPG. Uh, for people who love our YouTube movies, music videos, and more, we just relaunched our Patreon if you want to check it out and you like uh, supporting indie channels. Um, you also get individual direct messages from the crew to you uh, from all the wonderful people that work on our YouTube content. So thank you guys so much. We will see you next week. Bye. 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 Goodbye. You found yourself back at the start.